Welcome back to Shea Mo, where we have a gratuitous amount of pumpkins and we only very occasionally cook with them as well. If you couldn't tell by the monster mash party that is my current spatula lineup and the bag of bones dangling from my ear, today is our special Halloween edit and I for one am ready to turn some cakes into skulls. The first thing we need to do is grease this super cool skull pan that I've been absolutely dying to use. See what I did there? Using the paddle attachment, we're going to cream the butter and sugars together for about three to five minutes on medium speed until the mix is really pale in color and fluffy in texture. And while that is aerating, I'm going to stir together my dry ingredients with a whisk and also clean off the excess spray that got around the sides of the mold because we don't want any of this overspray to burn and smoke in the oven. Okay, so once the butter and sugar are sufficiently creamed, we're going to scrape down the sides and add our eggs one by one. One helpful tip to minimize the risk of eggshells in general though, is to crack them on a flat surface as opposed to the edge of something which pushes any loose shards into the egg itself. And then we'll start the mixer again on a low to medium speed. And once it's mostly incorporated, we can go ahead with the second one. Super creamy, really aerated, and you can see that wonderful texture. It's a perfect emulsion. And next we're gonna go in with our pumpkin puree, a taste of fall, and a little bit of Greek yogurt for a lovely moist texture. Do people still hate the word moist? I never hated it. Oh really? It was like the trend in middle school for people to hate the word moist, so here I am just saying it, moist. Um, actually, that was gross the last time that I just said that. Let's cut that. I'm also going to add some vanilla extract at this stage, which I'm just going to eyeball because this channel is basically one huge excuse for me to fulfill my childhood fantasy of saying, I'm gonna eyeball it on camera. Thank you to countless hours of not doing homework and watching Food Network instead. Now we have everything mixed in and do not worry if at this point your mix resembles some curdled egg dish that you got from some questionable food stall in a hawker center somewhere. I promise it will all be okay. We're going to add in all of our dry ingredients all at once. A little flour scooch. Okay. I have to say I got flour nowhere. That skill actually takes years to hone, believe it or not. I find that especially with this quantity, if I let it continue to mix until the flour on the sides disappears, it will be over mixed. So I prefer to mix the rest of it by hand with as few strokes as possible until everything looks relatively homogenous. So now we're going to grab our molds and there are two ways of filling this. The first one is arguably the most democratic. You can spoon it in and then using a smaller spatula, snap decision, Franken spat or mummy spat. Franken spat. This guy is actually my most used spatula when I was at the French Laundry. He was infamous and it was great because our personal stuff used to disappear all the time. Actually everything just would disappear all the time. The room of requirement is a very greedy thing, but I would use this so often that everyone recognized that it was mine which is a great way of branding, branding your shit. So just smooth it out to the best of your abilities, and that looks good. The other technique for filling the molds is with piping bags. Daily dose of ASMR. No, just kidding, I won't do that. Once your piping bag is filled, we're going to cut off a fairly sizable chunk of the end because these are pretty big molds and we don't want to squish the batter unnecessarily through a really small opening because that will deflate it. And definitely get rid of that before you forget it and it ends up in someone's food. This is almost like piping a madeleine or filling a madeleine mold if you have any experience with that. Grabbing a tea towel so that you don't damage your work surface and or create too much noise in the house, we're going to bang the molds. And I don't mean lightly, really go for it. Oh. 
The moral of the story is that this is the perfect time to take out any aggression, which let's be real, it's 2020 and we all might have. This is therapy and baking at the same time. How is that for? Multitasking. <laughs> that took a really long time to think of. Clearly my brain is not very good at it. If you have any leftover batter, feel free to bake it in a muffin or mini loaf pan. Today we're going with mini loaves because they're about as irresistible as that bag of flaming Hot Fries in your pantry after a few rounds of tequila. You know what I'm saying? Oops. Got that one everywhere. Ugh. Next, we're going to top these bad babies with cinnamon sugar and streusel, both of which I had lying around already from previous batches because I've had an unhealthy obsession, literally, with this cake since the inception of pumpkin season this year. But fret not, both recipes are incredibly simple and will be in the description box down below. This took about 12 minutes in my convection oven, but baking time will vary by oven, so just keep an eye on them and a temperature probe close by. Then let your newly minted orc babies forged from the fires of Mordor cool for 10 minutes. Wait, what? No, that's a different movie. <clears throat> so let these guys cool for 10 minutes on a wire rack. Do your best to resist touching them, which will be difficult, but do go ahead and inhale that intoxicating, fresh baked and hot out of the oven pumpkin cake scent. Bath and Body Works fall collection candles ain't got nothing on this. <laughs> because the last thing anyone needs is more ants in the house. The cakes need to be released from the mold while they're still warm to preclude a soggy exterior, which would just be Hades on earth for us to try and decorate later. And I think I'm gonna like it here. Feel free to subscribe for more classics major humor. While our cakes are cooling, we're going to gather our decor elements. Half of the skulls will be coated in a cinnamon sugar that's been mixed together with a Shea Mo's signature item until it's as sparkly as a vampire in the daylight. You're beautiful. You know it wouldn't be a Shea Mo episode without an appearance by these guys. The other half will be covered in milk chocolate that's been melted and thinned out with neutral vegetable oil until it reaches this glazing consistency. I know I'm mixing my holidays here with the snowman and my oil cruet, but honestly, what do milestones and markers of time even mean anymore? The mini loaves can be left plain or dusted with a 50-50 mix of powdered sugar and cornstarch. Today we're going to use some shiny cocoa powder, which you guessed it, is just cocoa powder mixed with some gold luster dust. It's like diamonds. Next, we have the pandemic's hottest accessory, behind the pandemic beard and a mask. The great thing about this technique is that it can be used to cover any holes the batter might have left on the surface. Just fill them in with a bit of sugar and no one will be any the wiser. I won't share your secret, I promise. And you might be thinking that this looks like a lot of sugar, especially for such a small cake, but not to worry, I intentionally decreased the sugar in the batter recipe to compensate for both of these toppings. You had one the other day, right, Russ? Was it too sweet? I did, and it was just right. Oh, nice. I did not pay him to say that. Ready for round two. Fight. For the chocolate coated skulls, ladle on a generous amount of the glaze, coating as much of the surface area as you can before using your fingers, it cooks best tools after all, to gently remove the excess in as few passes as possible, so as not to rip the surface of the cake. Oh gosh, I ripped out his eyeball. Not that I'm speaking from experience or anything. Once the skulls are coated, place them on a piece of parchment and refrigerate or freeze until the glaze firms up and is no longer tacky to the touch. Once your chocolate is set and you're ready to roleplay King Midas in a non-creepy way, swirl the bristles of a clean fluffy brush into your gold and bronze powders and buffy the vampire slayer away. Sorry, I'm getting carried away here. Start by brushing the high points of the face and work your way down using a circular motion to achieve a flawless, long-lasting coverage that will work more hours in the day than you do. Makeup is non-stop as your life. Yes, even taking into consideration your new work from home schedule where the boundary between personal life and work has been dissolved to never be seen again. No, just kidding, but do gently pick up each skull to gain access to the sides. Attention to detail is indeed what will distinguish your dessert from the rest of those aggressively mediocre golden pumpkin skull cakes out there, because there are so many, I know. Et voila, you are now a proud mother of skulls. Dare we even say, a mother sculler? 
So that concludes our special Halloween edition here at Shea Mo. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope this recipe gives you a pumpkin item in your household that is not only pretty and useless to look at, but also good and delicious to eat. See you next time, ghouls and gals. Happy Halloween. Forget water, drink tequila. Okay. <laughs>